skin homes We weather the cold forever Trying to ignite a spark with sticks and stones together Never having much luck, we just seem to be so hello everybody, welcome to the Robot Wars review show. Uh, I'm your host uh, CJM, as you'll know by my uh, YouTube description, obviously. Um, and we're going to be trying to review every single episode of Robot Wars. God help me. <laughs> uh, today I've got uh, two guests with me. I've got Kara and Connor. So thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you no for problems. having us. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be reviewing uh, episode one. So Hite of the first ever episode. So the episode opens up. We had the voiceover introduction for your commander in chief, the local knobhead Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> How we can tell we don't like Jeremy Clarkson, the local knobhead. <laughs> like literally, in my notes, it literally just says, "Oh God, Jeremy Clarkson." <laughs> Pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it's... put up with him for um, this series, he gets replaced. Yeah, it's it's a lesser known fact that he hosted Robot Wars. It's never really mentioned. It's kind of like that moment in his career that he likes to forget about. Yeah, I think there's very many moments in his career he'd like to forget about. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, so. <laughs> As he's doing like the opening hype package, talking about how these robots battle each other, you actually see a, a fight in like a pretty much a dark arena between um, a robot with a cutting disc and a kind of spiked hammer thing. Um, these are two US robots called um, the the one with the spinning disc is called the Master, and the spiked hammer robot is Four. And the unique thing about this, if you ever have had the uh, the first Great War. Um, video set at the end of the series one recap in the video you actually get the full fight of this where mm. the master wins by knockout mm -hmm. uh, because these robots actually came over to do like a uk tour an exhibition show uh where they where a couple of U um, uk robots were built to fight it um, including one robot that's actually in this episode um and they got uh, the british robots got battered by for the master and also another robot that you don't see on screen called la machine so, see i didn't know that yep like, and also yeah, robot wars also started off as a us thing and these two were the grand final of the 95 heavyweight championship where force hat force act um four manages to bend the master's disc out of shape but then gets pinned down and defeated by um the master in the end so pretty much like an underdog in a weird way. Pretty much, and then in the next yeah. year, then in the next year, the master got eliminated in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it seems to be a running theme with Robot Wars that sometimes that, that you know they can be champions for a while, and then it take one little wrong slip, and that's it. They're out like first time, first show kind of thing. It feels like. Yeah. Um, and then we get the, the reveal of Jonathan Pierce as the uh, commentator. So for most people as well who, who knew him before this, he was also a football commentator. Yeah. Probably known from like Match of the Day and things like that. But um, as the house robots are revealed, I think it's genuinely accepted that before Sir Kill a Lot comes in in Series 2, that Shunt is kind of the, the ringleader of the house robots. See, I would have said Matilda because of how much, how active she, well, she can be in a weird way yeah like that's one way they could probably you could probably look at it but i think mm. most most people either said it was either dead metal sergeant bash or shunt that were the uh kind of like the ringleader yeah how do you feel about that uh in a way i can agree because i use shunt quite a lot because i used him in the sumo and a lot of other events like tug of war uh, he, some yeah he was also in like the the british bulldog event which is in the next yeah. episode which i'll bring up uh when we get to that one Ooh, yes. so um i think one note that i have here is oh god shunt's axe <laughs> shunt's, yeah. shunt's yeah. axe in this series is very poor like uh, to, to quote one of the guys from the robot wars history podcast i could probably get hit by that thing and i have a 99 percent certainty i would not be injured from it <laughs> Yeah, I think with how, with the UK and everything, because I think it's more a case of like the US has been go had been going at that point for a good amount of years. But with a new series, they always kind of have to downplay it a little bit yeah. and see what the kind of limits they could get away with. 
Also, we do have to kind of cut the house robots team that built the robots some slack because they only mm. had six weeks to prepare. Yeah. They had six to, yeah, six, yeah, six weeks to build and de design and build the four house robots. Jeez. And um, later, once, though. Yeah, yeah th those ones came along later on. And even revealed in series two, when he was being pushed in for his first appearance, the kill lot still wasn't even finished. They were still working on it as he was going to the studio. <laughs> Just there, like, quickly. Like, you know when you get those, um like, makeup artists that are quickly, like, running after them if you're, like, at a concert kind of thing? Yeah. I Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just there with a little welding mask going, Wah! Yeah, <laughs> but um, also as well, there's the, the, the house robots also technically have personalities, which is revealed on the house robots DVD, which I'll go through now. So the description for Matilda is, um, as Chris Reynolds says, it's supposed to be some sort of robot pig from outer space that used to go around soaring up logging. <laughs> um, Sergeant Bash is supposed to be an army general from 2000 years in the future who patrols the streets and keeps the locals in order. So um, Terminator. <laughs> yeah, sh uh, Shunt is, a, Shunt is yeah. a robot apparently that originally was built for a building site to help move materials around. And like, yeah. and like break up stone and stuff. Like he used to work in like a factory or like a quarry and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and dead metal was apparently supposed to be a load of scrap metal that just kind of gained sentience and just smashed together and became this monster. Chappy! <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, also another thing i noted for this series was this is the only year sergeant bash's cutting disc actually does something <laughs> yeah out of all the house robots i think sergeant bash was the most useless but he was also the most um showmanship with a flamethrower yeah i think the only reason you you have sergeant bash around is for something like nemesis and then deator future uh future uh, series mm -hmm. so uh, we get so we're looking at um, when they introduce the, the the competitor robots where they drive out into the arena and kind of showcase their robots. I kind of miss this how they used to do that. Yeah, yeah. it's one of those things of like here's here's all the robots that are compete. Here's their them in their full glory. Yeah, that, before that... they get absolutely annihilated. <laughs> yeah, apparently, um, especially with series two, you'll see with you'll see in Panic Attacks Heat in series two. I'm led to believe that these um, they drive out and show off, show off their robots are taking place after the after the actual episode is done. These are stuff that ju they just put in in post. Yeah. So the first competitor we see is Roadblock. Uh, we won't spoil anything about Roadblock's honors or anything, just in case there are people that haven't seen series one. Like my fiance yeah. has not really seen Robot Wars before, so this is in well, a way she she can see what's going on this way. Well, for me. Personally, I grew up with Charles basically a lot more. I didn't even really know Clarkson had his own yeah introductory. So, like when we were watching this one to kind of go over, I was kind of like, "Oh, this You're is welcome. this is new. This feel it's so weird seeing because I grew up from it with Charles, and it was so different. It's kind of like, I know it's going to sound silly, the Attitude Era from WWE. Yeah. Like you have all this kind of, like, you you get thrown in with that, and then it seems a lot tamer for this first season. Yeah, th this in, in a way, the first season, uh, if I'd liken it to wrestling, I'd say this is the new generation era. It's kind yeah. of finding itself, and then you've got Series 2 onwards, and then you've got your Attitude Era right there. Yeah. So oh, um, we've just got something printing. Give us a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So whilst that's while you guys are signing out that printer, I'm gonna continue on. So our first competitor we have is Roadblock, which is built by um, Hender Blue, uh, Peter Kinsey, and Chris Kinsey from Bodmin Community College. Um, is made out of road signs, and as you can see, its main weapon is kind of like that front wedge, which is a 200 yard sign that's kind of been bent. And it has a cutting disc on the back, so it kind of has two modes of attack. And they, they've they labelled their robot as the fastest wheelchair in the world. Because it runs oh. off of um, wheel, uh, wheelchair motors. Uh, yeah, I remember that one. Uh, quite quite heavy as well. It's um, It's 82 kilos, if I remember correctly. I'll have the thing on the screen. but uh, And then next up... 
uh, as I've got in my notes, the pink wheelie bin lid of death. Yeah, Killatron. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Killatron is actually uh, its shell is made out of a, a wheelie bin a wheelie bin lid. Yeah, and I'm explaining it, that one to uh, Kara. Yep, and it's well known for its pink uh, design and its giant axe. And this is actually the lightest Killatron has ever been. It's seventy two kilos for this series. Mm hmm. And uh, being six wheel drive, and the third robot to come out is Barry. What, what a name for a robot, Barry! <laughs> I remember this one causing a bit of controversy as well with the um, one of the others in this series. Uh, yep, but one thing I love about uh, Barry as well is just it's just here comes Barry to the arena. It's like saying Chaos Two has been chucked out the arena by Steve. Barry. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the one thing that's notable is it seems to have something like a spring-loaded scoop. Yeah. Which they've got listed down as a um, pneumatic scoop, if I remember the uh, notes. Yeah. And also, one thing to note about Barry is this is the heaviest competitor that ever took part in Robot Wars. In terms, yeah, of, in terms of the heavyweight division. Um, in, my no in, in my notes, it says 116.9 kilos... Yeah, they actually reduced the um, weight limit to 100 kilos, so this would actually be illegal even in um, modern Robot Wars, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, it went from, uh, it was kind of like unlimited for the first series. Series 2 to 4 is an 80 kilo weight limit, and yeah. then from Extreme onwards to Series 7, it's 100, and from the reboot, it's actually 110 kilos now. Huh. I suppose that's with um, time and technology. Um, they had to keep going up because things will probably get heavier and heavier. Yeah, like so. Even including the reboot, Barry is the heaviest competitor they've ever had. Yeah. And um, Barry, I will note after they um, after we go through their um, gauntlet run, um, I'll note what actually happened to the Barry team in the future. But um, quickly moving on, we've got um, Shogun, a team that was um, that originated from Rolls Royce. So that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a unique one. So um, it's a black box design with cutting blade and forklifts as the weapons. But what I love about it driving out is it falls into the grill. As it runs <laughs> out, it bumps into the grill and then bumps up in the air. And I'm like, that is the, that is the best piece of driving I have seen. <laughs> <laughs> because back in these days, the grill was kind of the pit. Because yeah. in a way... Because um, a lot of robots back then were using caster wheels, like the sort of ones you'd get off the bottom of your couch. Um, yeah. The idea is the grill is the wheels would fall flat through the um, the grill and you wouldn't be able to move. Mm -hmm. So I think at some point I'm going to try and do a count of how many times robots ended up in the grill. I think it's an average of like three times per episode or something. Yeah. Um, and then next up, we have everybody's favourite flaming lady bird of death. <laughs> it's Nemesis. See, in my notes, I literally just put monster weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of drugs they may have been on when they created this thing, but I think it was that what I said to you earlier it was kind of like there was a t i can't think i can't remember the show but there was a tv show as a kid i used to watch monsters the hotel for monsters or something and it was an animated one yeah and it just reminds me of that <laughs> i'm like i think the one thing that kind of unnerves me about it is it's is I, eyelashes slash eyebrows those are the things that weird me out i think it is the eyebrows because it's one of those kind of i think it's a smile as well it's the eyebrow Think yeah. those kind of shaped eyebrows they're going to be scowling this one's got like full-on joker grin and yeah i'm actually looking at a picture of it now it looks like they actually made the eyebrows out of um broom handles yeah i thought they were like oversized paintbrushes or something like that something like that it looks like a paint handle okay so last up is um a robot that i alluded to previously which is grunt which is a giant kind of wedge looking robot it's mm -hmm. the lightest episode. No, it's the lightest robot in this episode at forty-five kilograms, which is actually middleweight territory. Yeah, it compared to later seasons. Yeah, and the unique thing about um, the the tour, uh, the UK tour for the US Robot Wars that I was telling you guys about, this robot actually competed in that. Oh wow! And Did he get very far? 
No, he got creamed all over the place. Because <laughs> um, you, 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 you actually see Shunt get... Uh, no, not Shunt. Grunt get beat up by La Machine and beaten up by Master, who, during this fight, Master actually swaps out its um, cutting disc for a giant blade. Hmm... Uh, the other thing to note as well is Grunt is the fastest robot in this episode at 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Which, in terms of, if you equate that to the size of a car, that's something like like 50 miles an hour for a robot. Yeah. If I remember rightly as well, Grunt is also a stock robot that was actually provided by Robot Wars to make up numbers. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a stock robot that was kept kept on from that, and it was driven by, I think it was a 21-year-old university student. Something like that, um, what they call an experienced driver. Yeah, so we've got um, that's been introduced, and then Philippa Forrester, best girl of Robot Wars, fight me. <laughs> but, <laughs> not uh, going to disagree, not going to disagree. Though, to be fair, Angela Scanlon for um, the reboot comes in a close second. <laughs> See, I've still not seen the reboot, so I can't comment on that one. Don't worry, there's a guy in there you're like, Dara Breen's hosting it. <laughs> Yay! (laughs) So yeah, so we get introduced to the gauntlet. So you've got the dead space route, which has all the house robots on it. You've got the the seesaw ramp and then the flat ramp. And then you've got like a maze and some corkscrew lances that come out and some pneumatic spikes that come out from the floor. Yeah. So first up, first robot to take on this is Roadblock, where they cut in between its gauntlet run with like how the how the team are describing the robot. So, my first note here on Roadblock, the first to take the corner, Dead Metal is drunk because Dead Metal <laughs> is somewhere off in the distance. Because when Roadblock comes around, it easily gets past Sergeant Bash. Dead yeah. Metal is already halfway off camera, going towards the seesaw section, <laughs> and Matilda is half asleep. And those weird little block things that's in front of Roadblock, he just powers through, gets through. Yeah. So it's the first ever robot to show up on Robot Wars. First on the gauntlet. First one to ever complete the gauntlet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, things to note about this. Um, they actually said in their um, post-match interview, well, their post-run interview, their original plan was to go over the ramps. Yeah, they had mentioned it, didn't they? Yeah. But, he- but here's the thing: in future, se- in this, in series two, they mention they can't go up the ramp because of some sort of width restriction and how they would get stuck on the ra- on the ramp. So That's if they actually, good- so if they went if they went for it, they could have ended up like Barry. Yeah. And which is which is kind of spoilers, but we'll get to that in a second. But um, at the same it time, is- that <laughs> actually could have changed the entire complexity of series one yeah yeah so one small change and the entire series could be a lot different that's the thing with the with this kind of thing it's that kind of you have to be quick in your decision making and sometimes those decisions you you don't i think in a weird way they don't see the arenas properly until they're kind of in there like looking down from where they're all standing going oh, we need to change plan, like, really quickly. Yeah, because at the same time, I'll give all the guys who drive in Robot Wars all the respect in the world, because they're quite a ways up away from their robot. It's not like battle bots where you're kind of right next to the box and you can see where you are, what you're doing, and you can make decisions, yeah. and you've got time to do things and react. These guys are, like, eight feet away up on a platform somewhere. And having to make snap decisions so quickly that... Yeah, it's like a bird's eye view, but... Especially in the later seasons when the robots can reach speeds of like 20, some some even 30 miles an hour around that arena. Yeah. Well, there, well, there's a contentious one and uh, there's a robot called Facet that can apparently go 48 miles an hour. <laughs> so, my, the, my, my favourite my favorite speed description is from Series 3, which is Plunderstorm. They describe the speed as faster than time itself. <laughs> All I can think of, the master in the US should have had that title. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so next up is uh, Barry. And Barry seems to be very uncontrollable from what I can see. Because it's it's pretty quick. Yeah. But they seem to like lose control very quickly. Because they drive kind of into the grill. And they run into Sergeant Bash. They try to whip back round and go for the ramp. And the springs... Matilda. Yeah, the springs and the scoop prevent it from going up the um the ramp because it lifts the wheels off the ground 
Yeah. Because you can see it slightly do, like, when they're trying to, you can see they're trying to control it, but it just feels like it's been, they don't have much traction in a weird way, or much grip. Yeah, so it's like, once once the wheels are taken off the ground, they're kind of a sitting duck, and Matilda becomes the first ever house robot to get stuck in. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. It uh, comes in with a chainsaw shot. I don't think they did too much damage. I think it was like only a glancing blow, but the damage was done, really. It's still that kind of, I know it sounds silly, first kill, as it were, by the house um, robots in a weird way. Actually, if I look at the notes here, it actually cut into one of the springs of Barry and the tyres. Um, oh, if you're looking at the, look at the picture here that I've got up. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. You can actually see some of the damage. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I actually forgot to che- check the damage damage report, but from what it looked like at first, it looked like it was kind of okay. Yeah, they um, actually had to replace one of the tyres. Yeah, so it, it like, uh, we'll move on quickly, like, I'll, I'll say about what happens to Barry after they get eliminated, like yeah. officially or whatever, but they do a very poor distance of 2.93 metres. Yeah, yeah, literally stuck at the start. Um, so next up we've got Shogun so the Rolls Royce team takes the gauntlet so far so good they're going over the ramp steady steady uh, progress but then they kind of lose balance and apparently they lost control of the robot and it fell off the side of the ramp yeah see in my notes I thought considering like how fast he was in the like he seemed fa- he did, I got it as extremely slow it yeah. felt like with him it seems slow, but I think that's in comparison to the other robots, because Nemesis and Roblox are much slower than Shogun. Because uh, mm-hmm. Roblox and Nemesis only go five and six miles an hour, respectively, and Shogun's something like eight or nine miles an hour. But I think when you've got yeah. how erratic Barry was, and then Grunt later on in the episode, then it does seem slower by comparison. Yeah. So, yeah, they just kind of fall off the side of the ramp and get stuck, and Matilda actually does do some visible damage. Yeah, because mm-hmm. as they're kind of trying to lift Shogun, they kind of bend. Matilda bends kind of the front of the chassis out of shape in a way, because a little bit of the frame comes off. So they they managed to make it through anyway. So they were deemed safe at ten point seven one meters, which pretty much in in any episode of Robot Wars um, pre full combat era, that would be enough to make it to the next round anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so up next is Nemesis. So before the fight, they um, demonstrate the pneumatic ram that they have. Uh, they have yeah. sl- slow and steady progress. They get over the first ramp. Sergeant Bash completely misses an opportunity to set fire to Nemesis here. I know. Uh, considering like what you had said of just Nemesis flames, I was just there going. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go over the second. They go over the second ramp, and Matilda's already there blocking the way. But Nemesis actually very smartly drives to the side and gets off the ramp and kind of rounds Matilda to the end zone. Mm-hmm. So um, as much as they normally get uh, get slack for being a comedy robot, that, that was some good good thinking and like good driving by the Nemesis team. As much as like, like you just said, like they're treated as a comedy team, but they're very very clever in terms of they know their robot quite well, and I think that in a weird way, that's what your team needs. To, you need to know your robot ins and outs and know what kind of limitations it can have. Yeah. So also, Jonathan Pierce calls Nemesis the grinning armchair. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can definitely see why that it got that description as well. Yeah. Next up, this is actually kind of my one of my favorite runs of the first series in terms of the Gauntlet, which is Grunt. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, Grunt, it uses its pace, it gets right past Sergeant Bash and then wedges under Dead Metal. So it's the first kind of interaction Dead Metal has is being rammed right underneath by Grunt, who, as a middleweight, that's a pretty good drive. Mm. They, they get a little bit stuck. But then they um, get around it. A little scuffle with Matilda makes it to the end zone. I don't think that Grunt was worried about this. No, it, no. It just seemed like they knew exactly what to do, exactly how to handle the situation, and and just going for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, f- um, finally, we have Killatron, which has my favourite introduction out of all the robots. You know that this is Killatron. <laughs> this is why throws the axe over. It's one of my favourite ones. Yeah. Like, short, simple, to the point. For me, it was the fact that, you know, everyone else was trying to avoid all the ro- house robots, and then Killatron's like, nope, let's go! I'm coming for all of you. 
Yeah, so they go over the ramp, they, uh, which means that Barry is very el- eliminated very quickly. They clear the ramp, but then they get st- they struggle on the second ramp because they go halfway up, and then they fall into what Jonathan Pierce calls his bent bed springs, which makes <laughs> me wonder how big is that fucking bed? <laughs> so if I remember rightly, they're actually um, suspension springs from old cars. Uh, either, either that or uh, Barry uh, uh, very graciously lent their springs for their scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I, I do remember the famous quote here. You won't beat springs with a pickaxe, boys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, they record a distance of 11.2. So they're safe through. So uh, sadly, Barry is the first robot eliminated. The team weren't too disappointed. But this wasn't the end of their Robot Wars run. They would return in Series 3 with a robot called Sonic. Hmm. And the motors and wheels from Barry were used for Sonic. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, I think, with the robots that you have, the ones that get eliminated, I think there's been a couple that have come back. Different different robot, but same team. And most repurpose their robots Mm -hmm. all the time. They work out what works, work out what doesn't. It's that kind of clever ingenuity, I think, that makes Robot Wars, well, really. Roadblock was in a series up to Series 3 because they entered Series 3 with a different robot just using the Roadblock chassis. Yeah. Um, um, no, appara- appara- apparently it was a different chassis, though, because I think uh, from what I've heard from like the Where Are They Now sort of thing, they still have Roadblock and Beast of Bodmin in, I think it's in uh, Chris Kinsey's shed. Huh. Um, it's like um, with Kilohertz as well. We've actually found pictures that Kilohertz is still in One Piece. Yeah. It's just incredibly dusty now. So <laughs> Nemesis and um Deator are actually probably still in one piece as well. Yeah, they 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 even host their own um events in Ireland. Yeah. So after the after that elimination, they do kind of a damage report uh where everybody's more uh, everybody's more or less fine. Killatron apparently suffered a flat tire, but it was easily replaceable. Um and then it's revealed like with the with the waistcoats that the Nemesis team are wearing. Uh, two members of the team couldn't make it over, so they made them wear the matching waistcoats, which became their trademark in the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the first Great War video, um, they actually do an interview before they go out to their gauntlet run between Matilda and I think it's Kieran Byrne, or is it Peter Redmond? I can't remember which one. But um, she's actually wearing the uh, the waistcoat as well, but like plays it <laughs> off as if nothing's happening. <laughs> Uh, so then we move on to our first ever trial, which is the sumo. So this is Shunt's debut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is the first impression we get of Shunt. So the aim of the game is to survive for 60 seconds or as long as you can or push Shunt out of the arena. So they've got the ele- elevated platform. What I love as well is sumo eventually returned in Robot Wars Extreme Destruction's video game. So you could actually play a sumo match with your friends and stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I do miss in the later seasons with trials, especially like sumo, tug of war, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. So, so with this one, Shogun is the first one to take on Shun and kind of gets stuck on like the bulldozing front and is just very slowly edged off the side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they didn't put up much resistance in a way. I think because of the how the bulldozing um fr- the bulldozer front because you know that kind of V wedge that Shunt has. Mm-hmm. That's actually the front of the robot. The where, yeah, where the scoop and the axe is, that's the back. Yeah, in later seasons, they basically flip the controls so the front is with actually the um scoop and the axe. Yeah, to make it easier to drive if I remember rightly. Yeah, in the video game, if you play like the Extreme Destruction video game, it's actually the original way where the bulldozing shunts are actually uh, the front ways, and the axe and the scoop is the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so so shunt uses its pushing power. Knocks it out. Good performance for Shun. Not so much for um, Shogun. 21.51 seconds. Mm, very quick. I mean, the fact that they were like, very hopeful as well, because they, like, yeah, not the best time, but there's other times in Bass where it's like four seconds out. Yeah, and also and- very much a lack of wedge protection. Mm-hmm. Mm. I-, I think, in my opinion, if Shun went with the, with the scoop, this would have been over a lot quicker. Yeah. A lot quicker. Yeah. So, and then the next up is Killatron. And Killatron manages to last a full minute, but halfway through, Shunt almost does get Killatron off. But Richard Broad, who's controlling Killatron, he does some very good driving here to keep Killatron in the fight. 
He even tried to um, hit Shunt with the axe as well. Yeah, because uh, with most robots, it's just hang on for as long as you can, struggle and survive. But at least with Killatron, they're at least trying to give it a go. They're trying to make it a yeah. bit more competitive. Yeah. They made it a bit more entertaining, like, to actually kind of watch as well. Yeah. Because it's that thing of, like you've just said, they or everyone else tries to kind of keep it so that they're trying mm-hmm. to just keep in. They don't really engage. Whereas this one, it just... It, they do engage and it's kind of one of those things of ooh how how's this going to turn out when you're kind of watching it yeah they all, all i will say is they always have entertaining runs killatron their series 2 gauntlet run is my favorite gauntlet run of all time but we'll get onto that one when i get to series 2 yeah. series 2 yeah <laughs> but yeah so next up is roadblock at first with the roadblock um fight against shunt um roadblock does seem to be struggling yes yeah they couldn't get it into position properly um it's such a big robot yeah it's wide and because of its turning circle it was struggling to turn around to get to shunt but then mm-hmm. when they got to shunt you could see that their um ramp well their, their 200 yard road sign scoop thing actually did get underneath shunt and then just yeah. charges shunt right off they saw that opportunity and just went we're taking it we're going we're going with it and the famous quote from um, Jonathan Pierce, and death by glory, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. they drive off as well, which means that they are second to Killatron um, in the standings. Yeah. But it was a very good drive, and I think on the first Great War they actually did kind of get a standing ovation when they got back to the pits because they defeated the house robot. Yeah, yeah, that's that kind of sweet glory, really. If you can take down a house robot, yeah, it's one of those kind of yeah well done mate kind of thing mm-hmm. so roadblock was kind of the first robot to ever take on a house robot and win yeah and then next up we get nemesis who for the first couple of seconds is very close to the edge of the um, the sumo ring but it looks like a bit of clever driving as it seems to bait uh shunt into coming closer to them yep and then just pushes shunt shunt's teetering oh. and then nemesis just hu- um, hucks them off Give it gives him a good butt slap and all I got in my notes is off by butt. They won. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, also the line we thought Shunt was unbeatable and fearless. <laughs> He's losing to that. <laughs> and then Jeremy Clarkson saying that was my friend and you knocked him off. <laughs> and they have not a single sorry look on their face. <laughs> they they have no f's to give. No. <laughs> But, um, and then last up is, um, Grunt. One of the most controversial sumo ones. Dodges shunt and then drives off in four seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, the note is four seconds, really? <laughs> I, I did a bit of research into this one myself, and it was actually an intentional loss by the driver because Grunt was a stock robot. Um, oh. thus he was eliminated at this stage because he was not permitted to pass the trial rounds. Okay. Which, um, if I look into the notes here, the Barry team took to um, their website and basically said that they felt Barry would have been perfect for the Sumo because they were a legitimate team rather than a stock robot. Yeah, and also at the same time with Barry, I think Barry's plough could have been lower than Shunt's front. And not just that, there is... And actually, um, Shunt is the lightest house robot. He's only 105 kilos. Mm. Yeah. So with that weight, could Shunt even push um, Barry that well? Yeah, that's the thing. And that's, I imagine in the um, latest seasons, Shunt could have even been built as a competitive robot because of a weight limit. Yeah, like it, all they needed to do was just take off something and then Shunt could have competed. Yeah. yeah. So Shogun makes it to the finals and then in the head-to-heads, uh, we get revealed who's fighting who. Uh, one thing I'll mention from the first Great War that's not mentioned in the episode is... A little bit of um, and I like this because it shows that the team are a bit cocky, but also they're doing a bit of entertaining for the cameras. Yeah. Where um, Killatron, as Captain Captain Richard Broad, introduces himself to the Shogun team and presents them with a bin bag for the bits that their robot will be going back in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Shogun team revealed that they've only got one wheel working, so please go easy on us, lads. And then Nemesis is introduced to the Roblox team and um, 
they say hello and they're, they're having a bit of a problem they can't figure out which cutting disc to use yes and they're all just like because it clogs up the fur yeah <laughs> So yeah, so we've got our first ever Robot Wars fight, Roadblock versus Nemesis. Mm. And the start of the era of fire. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yep. But what I love about this fight is Roadblock could easily just go under and tip Nemesis over, but instead they yep. go for the cutting disc and make a bit of a show of this and yep. easily start it's cutting awesome. through. Because yep. the thing is, other than the ladybug like kind of fur, underneath is um, D- um, well, Nemesis, and then later on Deator, they're very, very sturdy-looking robot because it takes a bit mm. of a battering, but the main shell is completely fine. Yeah, yeah. As um, I think they said, it was two mil thick steel or something like that, which is actually quite a thick grade of um, steel. Yeah, and during this, Roadblock does have a, ve- a rare case of very bad driving because they drive into Matilda CPZ and get trapped on the arena spikes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but then Roblox then ramps Nemesis, and then we get it. Nemesis is on fire. fire. Yes. <laughs> However, at this point, um, Jonathan Pierce, in a way, he's not laughing. He doesn't find it funny at this point. In a way, it's kind of treated as serious. That's the thing. I think with the semi and the fi- final, like the finals, his tone kind of seems to change a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he goes very serious, like, very dramatic. Yeah. I think it was trying to, like, hype up the fact that this is finally, like, the one-on-ones. Like, the trial and the gauntlet is the, is a bit of fun, but now here's where where the action really starts. Here you've seen all these robots, like, try and take on, just have a bit of a laugh. Now it's... Now it's battle time. Now get ready for the, the main event. This is what you kind of wait for. Yeah. So Cease is called. Roadblock wins via knockout. Something you see towards the end of the um the first great war video is you see some behind the scenes like outtake flubs that philippa says um but also what's noted is the guy with the fire extinguisher who goes in to put out nemesis trips on the pr- trips on the fence and falls on his ass <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh that's the worst thing you can imagine really like just there with those two i got put out the robot and, and the and the funny thing is, they edit a line from Recyclops versus Scrapper over the top of him falling over by going, "No, no, you shouldn't have done that." <laughs> um, and you I see think... that you see that Nemesis, one of the eyes was crushed by Matilda. So so far, Matilda has done the most damage out of all the house robots. See, this is why I I love Matilda as a robot because as much as like you do have. The big, I know it sounds stupid, the bigger names, so like Sergeant, um, Sergeant Bash, Kill. yeah, Kill a Lot, uh, you know, everyone goes for them, but Matilda's kind of like an underdog in a weird way in the house robots. But yeah. she was kind of like one of these robots that I, when I was watching as a kid, I was like, oh, I love it. I, that's the one that kind of got me like, yeah, oh, that one's really cool. And and weird way, I think it, it kind of does help as a female. Because with Robot Wars being geared in a weird way for men, it kind of helped a generation of younger girls try and get into it. Which was kind of... And with the team that went out in the first round, seeing a woman actually participating and actually in future seasons there's going to be... There's a lot more. It's something that kind of brings you in. Yeah. In the future you get like... um, Also in... um, in two episodes time we get another uh, woman driven robot which is um WYSIWYG um by Michelle yeah. Michelle Wheelie who actually comes back in um series 2 with Cruella yeah. but um also as well you get um future robot uh, women's teams like Cat Free and also the famous Widow's Revenge yes we'll we'll, we'll get we'll get to that bridge we when we get to it yeah definitely but another thing to bring up as well is another bit that's cut out on the uh, the TV release on the first Great War video is Nemesis brings up that they cause damage to um, Roadblock and they go over to the Roadblock team and they point out that in the side there's an actual hole that the pneumatic spike went right through Nemesis and no, right through Roadblock's side. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you look, well, we'll probably get into it when you look in when you look at the finals. You can see that it, it, for me, like you will see like where that damage is but we'll get back we'll get to it when we actually talk about the final and they also they keep a bit of nemesis fur as a souvenir which actually does t- 
tie in like in future series like uh, robots that were beaten by nemesis and deator they would give them a bit of uh, fur as like a souvenir <laughs> it was like um pussycat team in future actually painting on their robot which robots they'd taken out yeah <clears throat> And also with the razor one, they called themselves the Eraser, which I liked. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next up, we've got Killatron versus Shogun. So the Killatron versus Shogun fight. This is uh, one thing that we noted before the before the fight was um, Richard Broad had fastened some spikes onto the end of the axe shaft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is the first time we've seen a robot modify itself specifically for certain rounds. Yes. So See, you were saying. For me- um for me i'm i'll get into it in a minute i actually didn't like that they did that in a weird way i would say what what about it that you didn't like um i can get you know they're modifying to you know amp up like see what they can do uh, not see what they can do but more they're only kind of doing it to kind of go against they're not doing it just for a whole aesthetic. They're doing it specifically just for this one in a weird yeah, way. I, I think they did keep them on for the, the roadblock fight. I, th- I think they did. But like, like, like they sometimes do that with certain fights where like they'll have specific things that they have to counter certain other robots. Like Tornado yeah. eventually has like the scoop to counter Hypno Disc and things yeah. like that. So this fight goes on, and what we can note is Shogun is having drive problems, which we mentioned they've only got one wheel working. Apparently they managed to figure it out, but in the post-match they do reveal that the speed controller blew. They put another one in, but it didn't match the other one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they they were kind of like a sitting duck in a way. Killatron, the start. Ki- yeah, Killatron's first axe attack misses completely. Um, Shogun yeah. then ends up getting stuck on the grill. And Killatron comes in for the kill with an axe attack that wouldn't cut the skin on a rice pudding. Yeah, that's the one thing I've got as my notes. I find Killatron's weapon a bit eh. Yeah. It doesn't feel... It doesn't feel strong enough. It looks like it just has the um, push up, but then it uses gravity to drop it down. Yeah, it doesn't... For, like, what I noticed, when it you have to physically have enough force... And sometimes it looks like from when they're having to force it like over, it looks like that robot's going to take off because of it, and you're just kind of like, yeah, yeah. For for series yeah. two, for series two though, they ramped up the axe significantly, and it was like put punching holes in so many different robots and everything. Yeah. But um, again, that's a uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, then <laughs> Sergeant Sergeant Bash goes to saw Killatron. And the saw explodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was, it was only a flimsy, um, basically what you'd use on a grinding wheel at this point. Um, they weren't actually using a steel blade or anything like that. Yeah, it's one of the first times we actually hear uh, Jonathan Pierce openly laughing. Yes. Because it was actually pretty funny. Well, this is the thing that I said earlier about, like, this is the very first season. They can't go all out because there's not a budget really behind it everyone's trying to fund it for themselves because i guarantee there's a bigger budget to be able to kind of give to competitors i would assume yeah later down the line so it's kind of one of those things of it feels like these robots especially are ones that you kind of will go into your shed quickly go what can i make yeah but it's like um, that. That uh, like throughout this series, you'll see that Sergeant Bash's cut and disc takes such a battering. Like I think there's another fight like later on between Wedgehog and Dreadnought, where the disc comes off and ends up sitting on top of Wedgehog. So it looks like Wedgehog's got like a like a two D sombrero on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one actually, and yeah, yeah. So and then we come up to the uh, the heat final. So Killatron wins by knockout. And we come up to the heat final just as they're going in. Um, also, post fight damage uh, damage report is apparently a wire came off in Killatron. I don't know where that happened. Like it could um, have, it could they, have happened during the hit from Sergeant Bash. It wouldn't surprise me because they were when they are showing the damage because they they're when they're in the pit, not what well, not in the pit. Well, in the pit, it's like the backstage area. Yeah, 
you can see them kind of show where it is, and you could see where some of the damage near that area is, so it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me as well with the gravity of that axe falling, but it'd probably knock a few things loose in this yeah. series, because yeah. it doesn't have the um, weight of the robot to stabilise it underneath, because it's only a bin lid. Yeah, because also to mention as well, not all of these fights are fully like shown on TV, like a lot of them are edited down yeah mm -hmm. like in, in future instances like the series four opening melees were all five minutes long but they'd be cut down to like two and a half minutes yeah uh, that's the thing if you're on a timer especially with like program with programming if you've been given a timer you and you know you're in editing mm -hmm. you're gonna take out the boring bits anyway yeah so i feel like maybe in that instance we could have missed when the wire came out yeah yeah so then we move on to the uh, the uh, uh, heat final. So we've got Killatron versus Roadblock. So mm -hmm. the, in a way, you can see this sort of fight. This is tailored for something like Roadblock. Yeah. Yeah. See, and I didn't a, find a, it a like... nice. It's like a nice sluggish robot. Loads of ground ground clearance. No way it can yeah. self right either. You can tell what's going to happen from the start. To be fair, yeah, but you, but you do have you do have a famous immortal line before they go out to um, to uh, battle the uh, the team of uh, Roadblock, which is what are your tactics? Straight in, straight out, which yeah. they would actually repeat two more times in two more successive series, and then it would actually come up again in series seven when wj dykstra from gravity uses that tactic in his opening fight yeah so we get the uh the fight so killatron gets the first shot in once again bounces off doesn't couldn't break the skin of a rice pudding <laughs> <laughs> and uh roadblock gets underneath like you kind of see it come in and shoves killatron into the cpz luckily i think killatron doesn't really take that much damage from the cpz and gets out yeah and no. then just get then roadblock gets underneath killatron in a way where half the wheels are stuck on like uh, up in the air and the other half are kind of in the air as well but on the side of roadblock so i feel like in a way that if killatron tried to move they would have toppled themselves over anyway yeah, yeah, looking at a picture we've got up just now, um, you can see the damage on Roadblock, but you can also see where Killatron is just stuck. Yeah. There's no chance to get off. And then there was that piggyback time quote, and very yeah. laboriously just drives around in circles until eventually Killatron rolls over onto its back. Only because um, Dead Metal knocks Roadblock basically to speed things up, I think. Yeah. It makes me wonder, what did, what did that look like in the unedited version? I think we. I've got in my note it was not a very long match, but I feel like it would have been like because I, how long could you really, you know, use footage of them piggybacking? They may have just been like saying to the house robots, "Look, this is going on for so long. Just, just go. Just ca we need to get it done." Yeah, De Dead Metal give Roadblock a hand. This has taken a while, and eventually they roll over. the The Roadblock team are very ecstatic. So yeah. they're, they're saying like the whole thing of uh, I loved every second of it. They've been cocky in the pits, and now we've we've taken out the cocky competitor. And um, yeah. as as the um, so Roblox makes it to the grand final, but as the episode's going off the air, the house robots just turn up and beat the crap out of Killatron. Oh, didn't have, I've never seen I've that. I've not footage. seen. Oh, you, oh, when when he says see you next week, as the credits are rolling, you see Matilda, Sergeant Bash, and Dead Metal come over and just kick the fuck out of Killatron. <laughs> <laughs> probably for being so cocky in the pits. <laughs> probably. But just like the whole the thing time. Is they're probably all sat in the back because I guarantee the house robot teams are in the back watching them to I see what they're doing. And seeing yeah. it. Yeah. But I think as well, like if you, you can't see it in this series, but especially in series three, you can see where the robot, the guys driving the house robots are. They're just in a corner off to the side. Yeah. We, I think in a weird way, it's um, really unfair. But I think in all honesty, the house robots should be as much as they are the house robots and they're there to kind of, you know, stop them. They should have the same advantages as the team's height, like eight foot up in the air well, on a meant, platform. They're meant to be the house robot. They're not yeah, meant, but I they're know meant that. to have that home field advantage. Yeah. This I is get, our home, you're I entering get, it. I do get that, but I just feel like in a weird way it would make for a good kind of view in a weird way if you just see some of the house robots going, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, to be fair, it kind of feels like that in future series. Deb Metal and Shunt end up having alcohol addictions and driving into pits. 
I love how the house robots all get this just like you said earlier, the personalities, and it's just like you got I find that with later series you're watching not just for the fights, but just for the banter, the laughs and everything else. It's one of I, those kind I of just, shows. I just remember the amount of times people took the piss out of F bot. <laughs> yeah. But what, yeah, what Oh yeah, there was actually there was actually one fight in Extreme Two where Sergeant Bash just decides he's had enough, goes after Refbot and tries to set Refbot's head on fire. I was going to say <laughs> there was a robot, a house robot that just had enough, didn't they? And just they just were like, "Nah, I don't care." Yeah, yeah. There was also time that there was also time Sergeant Bash accidentally set fire to kill a lot. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Um, funnily enough, this actually happened twice. Kill a lot got yeah. set on fire by Sergeant Bash, but the first time they never really acknowledged that Sergeant Bash did it. <laughs> and now, and then they made Sergeant Bash kind of like the rebel of the group, didn't they? Because he kept going after everyone. Yeah, but what I love as well is just you, you see it here with Dead Metal mostly, but then you also see it with Shunt in later series that they kind of develop an alcohol addiction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just drunk driving all over the place. All I can think of when you just say drunk robot is if you have you ever seen the film Robot? Yes. Robin yeah. Williams' character. All I can think of is ha- that's how they would be. <laughs> <laughs> just like nah, no, no, I'm no shit's given. I'm going to do this, and whether you like it or not. <laughs> but yeah, so Roblox wins the first ever heat. So, how did you feel about that match? Because for myself, I didn't find it satisfying in a weird way. Like when you're like, wa- when you're watching it as a four or five year old, you're like, "Go on, Roblox, take him out, take him out. This is brilliant. This yeah. is the greatest match." But it's like when you rewatch it again a few years later, it's it's not a very good match. But at the same time, I don't think that Roblox were looking to go for like entertaining. They just wanted to just get the match over and done with and get to the finals. Yeah, yeah. I but for, I would say for a pilot because this is the thing. It, it was the pilot episode for the UK. If yeah. you're going to bring in people, yeah, Robot Wars, it's brilliant. Like, it's a, such a, a brilliant concept. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to sell it, you need to have, in a weird way, especially with the finales, you need to kind of have that energy and really uplift it. Because if you're kind of feeling wanting from the last fight in that episode, it kind of makes you feel like, eh, not so yeah it yeah. might not want you might not want to come back and watch it but then you kind of think okay give it a chance let's see and it does get better mm-hmm. yeah like you do, you do get that a few times there are quite a few heats especially in future series where the, the entire heat is just a giant dud like you just get yeah. matches that like you wouldn't write home about like you get like boring heat sometimes you know what's going to win it yeah. and the others are all just phone in effort to destroy the thing is <laughs> the shame is as well is it's the next series, the next, se- no, not the next series, the next episode actually has a very good, like, set of fights, and then you also have your first ever judge's decision in the next episode as well. Yeah. So, well, the- I, I, feel, I feel like, in a way, they should have probably, sw- in a way, to try and make sure that you drill in enough excitement, they probably should have put Heat B first. Yeah. Like, put Heat B first, and then put Heat A second. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the thing, it's one of those things, like, if you're trying, like, from a standpoint, you if you're trying to sell the show, you need to have the excitement, especially with how the teams were, like, they're saying, oh, they were talking like this in the back step. Well, why didn't we get, if that was how it was in the pit backstage, when I, they're I, I feel trash like it... talking and things like that, and then yeah. it kind of gives this unsatisfying kind of match, it's kind of like... Yeah. Okay. It's, maybe. It's, like if, it's like if we actually saw the Killertron boys being cocky in the pits, like that thing with the bin bag. If they kept that in there, then I think yeah. then at least then we kind of got that whole thing. Because in a way, when you watch it without the uh, that footage, it th- this comment of being cocky in the pits comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. And if anything, like, as well, rewatching it as well. Uh, the guy who operates the the circular saw, I think it's Hender Blewett, um, for Roblox. He does seem a he's the most cocky guy in the entire episode. Yeah, because when they clear the gauntlet run and they say about like he operates the disc and he says like we didn't have a chance to use it because we were just too damn quick. Or when they beat Killatron, they said, "Oh, I, he's like I loved every second of it," sort of thing. 
it feels like in a weird way, like um Big Brother in a weird way, if you compare they have all this kind of like, oh it's secretive booth talk and things like that. But then when it finally comes to like down it might be because of the editing, we never know. But if they are doing all this backstage, you would think that's what the audience wants because what with Big Brother, you want to see their confessionals and see how yeah. In, in, a, in a way, you could you could sell you could have sold sold this like a WWE match in that yeah. like Killatron is the heel. They're going around the pit saying that we're better. We've brought uh -huh. you this. In, we brought you this in advance because we're going to beat you. And then when you've got um, Roadblock slaying the, slaying the giant, essentially, then Roadblock yeah. then Roadblock can be seen as this all conquering hero. And it's like, oh, I I want to tune in in the final. I want to see Roadblock win. I think if they create, it, I know. I, I get that, you know, starting the episode, starting, like, the season, starting the entire franchise in a weird way for the UK. Yeah. It's one of those things of, like, if you had it, they, they work, they were kind of, you could see them working out what works, what doesn't in this first kind of, even in yeah. the first episode, you can see that they're trying to work out what will work for the future, what won't. But they I think it would have been beneficial if they had some form of story, like, like if you're going to do it episode, episode like that, and you've got backstage, you've got out in the out in the front. You need to have everything there to kind of make it. Yeah, because I I think one instance like this in series three though, but there's one instance of this is a one episode storyline that got dropped. But I actually kind of wanted to see how this ended, how this panned out. Was yeah. in series three in the heat where Panic Attack um, returns. It's also in a heat with Exterminator. And Exterminator beats Hefty in the first round. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> but um, you're about to talk about these. <laughs> I, know, I, I know, I know, but it, it's like. But, 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 by, but by the time we get to series three, I think everybody would have forgotten by then because that's like fifty episodes later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, but yeah, during the second round uh, with Exterminator, Philippa reveals that she's backing Exterminator to win the entire tournament because. There, apparently there's like a robot war sweepstakes going on and apparently in the sweepstakes she got exterminator so she's backing exterminator to win so she can win the sweepstakes <laughs> obviously as obviously as we know exterminator doesn't go on to like win the competition but it makes me wonder if there was an actual robot war sweepstakes backstage who won yeah probably craig charles <laughs> Because I, I, I think I think Craig lost series two because in series two um, he keeps saying like I put my money on Cassius to win. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's the thing with Charles. He's very kind of like open about that kind of thing. Like, yes, he's the announcer, but and well, not announcer, but presenter. But yeah, he's, he's so he's, kind he, of he's also just as much a fan of the show as we are. Yeah, he's, yeah. I I think it was like. Uh, I want it. He was at a comic con. I can't remember if it was in UK. And someone had asked him like about Robot Wars, and uh, is you can just see his face light up, going, "Yay! Yeah. <laughs> I get to talk about this." I, I feel sorry for him because he was kind of upset that he didn't get picked for the reboot. He wanted to do it again. Yeah. Like you could tell that affected him because he wanted to go back and do Robot Wars again. Because he's even said like it's probably the f one of the favorite things he's done in his career. Yeah, I don't blame him because imagine just being, you know, loving. Because you can tell he loved robots as a kid. He's grown up kind of like how we've grown up watching Robot Wars. He's seen this, and then being asked to do a show where he gets to see all these robots and everyone smash coming each to, other up. And it's like a little. I know it's how stupid a little boy's kind of dream to kind of see. Mm. That. I don't know about many girls, but you know. Yeah. But it's that kind of thing of oh my god, this is it's like getting your dream job. Yeah, I'm trying to go back through my notes just to see if there's any kind of like highlights. Yeah. So we'll we'll kind of rate some of these like in a way like the um the gauntlet run. So out of out of five, like or just well, we won't do out of fives and stuff. Like we'll do like five star battle ratings for like like the future series, which is pure combat and stuff like that. But um, we'll go through like favorites and least favorites of certain things. So so in the yeah. gauntlet, who was your favorite run through the gauntlet? Um, for myself, I would have said either Nemesis or Grunt in that respect. Yeah, I, I'm going with Grunt because like the power and pace managed to get under dead metal and kind of really had no issue getting through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, See, I I have to agree. It's either Nemesis or Grunt for me. 
Nemesis was just one of those, like, I'm with this series, I haven't actually watched the first ever season of this, so I was kind of sitting there kind of like, ooh, and I just remember seeing Nemesis and going, oh my god, I love it. <laughs> and it's just like, you were expected to go on fire, but no, you actually see some really good driving from them. Cause well, that's if... when you kind of, like, when you had said literally, because we had talked about this a couple, a couple of days ago, and you just said, it's always on fire, and then as soon as they get near, the, like, um, any sort of thing. Sort of, I was just there like, ready! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's I, I, kind of like, um, th- th- there was one time that um, Deator got caught on fire in Series 3, and um, Jonathan Pierce said, I would pay my admission fee just to see this. <laughs> just just to have a show, like a clip show of how many times it just catches on a ch- fire. A channel, <laughs> has, a channel has done that. There is a 40 minute video of every time Nemesis slash Deator catches fire. I know what I'm watching later. <laughs> you should you should watch the special grudge match between Sergeant Bash, Ram Rombit, and Nemesis. Um, Ram Rombit isn't that another one that just catches on fire? It was a sacrificial robot made for this event. <laughs> it was driven. It was driven by George Francis. Nemesis goes into the battle as well against Sergeant Bash with a kebab strapped to it, a chef's hat, <laughs> and before the fight, douse themselves in paraffin. Could you imagine being backstage and being told, right, you are the sacrificial robot, but this is what's going to happen. And they're just... Oh my have... God, I've just looked it up and oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> You're the sacrificial robot, mate. And they're just like, yeah, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Mr. Big Weld on like diet pills. <laughs> oh my God, I'm actually looking at pictures of that fight now. Yeah, they d- yeah they douse the robot in paraffin, and that is the most up in flames Nemesis ever got. <laughs> I'm just seeing one of the pictures. Oh my god! It's just fire everywhere. The whole the whole fight, Jonathan Pierce is laughing to death. The thing is, I get like you you know Jonathan Pierce is probably just there like being really serious, but all you can see like just he's in the booth just crying with laughter. You like just there going, what the hell is going on? This is brilliant. What I love is he even says, for goodness sake, don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah, they were spraying paraffin before the fight started. <laughs> yeah. But but it's moments like that, like, that's what you want from Nemesis. But then you see that Nemesis, even in defeat, sometimes has really good driving. It does. Yeah. yeah. So what was everybody's least favourite gauntlet run of this episode? Uh, I'll let you go first, Connor. Um, I don't know on this one. Um... They all actually performed pretty well. Roadblock was slow um, in that respect, but it did get through. Um, Dead, Dead, Barry... Dead Metal was drunk. <laughs> I'd, I'd have weirdly and, and probably unfortunately said Shogun. Yeah, I would say Shogun. I, I was going to say Shogun as well, because in a way, like at least with Barry's, there was a bit of drama because they were like they were stuck and they were frantically trying to free yeah. themselves and they suffered damage. So at least Barry you got a bit of drama one. there. See, okay, I've got one then for you guys in this entire heat a which robot do you think deserves some redemption or didn't deserve what happened to them um i think in a way a robot that didn't deserve the beating that it got was shogun because unfortunately the, the wheels that, that like their speed controller blue so it was kind of sad for them to go into, yeah. go into the match as a gimped robot already so i feel I'm... sorry for them I'd also feel sorry a bit for Barry, especially with the way um, that um, Grunt was also the stock robot that they got yeah. knocked out yeah. by. I, th- I think Barry's. I think Barry's a robot that deserves a bit of redemption. Yeah. yeah, I feel like in a way, imagine like if Barry made it through. Imagine Barry versus Killatron. Ooh. Ooh. Like I imagine could ba- Barry ca- Barry could have flipped Killatron, and I think even could have actually got a judge's decision out of Roadblock. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would have beat Roadblock, but I think they would have cut it close. <laughs> so, if, so if, I think it, like, if Barry went straight down the, the, uh, the dead space zone of the gauntlet, I feel like they would have really done well here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we move on to the, um, the trial. So who had the best trial uh, run in the sumo? I'm going with Ro- I'm going with Roadblock on this one. I'm I'm going with Roadblock as well. 
I'm, I'm going to go with Roadblock, but also Nemesis in a way. Yeah. yeah. My, my, my honourable yeah. mention would be Killatrons, because very good driving and trying to keep it entertaining as well with the axe. Yeah. The fact they made it, like, I know the Roadblock, Nemesis, they all kind of, they did win. Yeah. But the way that Killatron did, like, went through in terms of how they coped with it, it was one of those things of it was quite interesting to watch. Yeah, there was not much compared to Roblox and Nemesis, but it was still engaging enough that made you go, "Whoa!" Kind of, mm-hmm. like, what's going to happen? Like, are, are they gonna... are they going to make it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like Roblox my favorite just because the charge they drive shunt off and then decide to go off themselves, mm-hmm. like a celebratory kind yeah. of like. I'm coming after you. <laughs> what I love watching on that, I think it. I don't. I can't remember if it was actually in the episode, but I think it's in the the first Great War. Is you actually see um, Shunt's onboard camera as he goes off. Yeah, and like he, you see him tumble and Roblox follow after him. Like the 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 house robot cameras were really good. Yeah. 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 Worst the worst run. I'm gonna say Shogun again. Sorry, Shogun, but Grunts <laughs> just because Grunts was funny. Yeah, it was the fact. Like, Considering it was intentional to do that, they didn't even make a show of it. It just went, "Right, oh, fuck it, Don." I what I would have loved to have seen is instead of doing it like where he just gently went, I wanted to see him just rock it off into the sunset, just take <laughs> off, <laughs> yeah, disappear. If, if you go out, if you're going to go out, just at least go out in style. Like go to the edge and then just rock it off the other side. <laughs> and then you could have at least just said, "Well, I lost control." Yeah, I, I, I lost control. Shunt, shunt, shunt gave me, shunt gave me a nudge. <laughs> or you or you could cover up by saying I had like radio interference and the, when I went to go backwards the robot shot forwards. Yeah. Yeah. There was a way of doing it so that they could have really kind of made it so that it looked like an like a true act. like it wasn't it looked like an accident but not when you find out the information and then the controversy behind it with Yeah. Grunt and and back. Uh, but, yeah. So like if you're going to go out at least kind of, and if you're, if it's just a case of not being bothered, at least kind of make it so that it's entertaining. Yeah. Like right, so... just because you're not bothered, other pe- like the people watching are going to be invested. I mean, I bet you there were people out there that were kind of like, "Come on, Grunt, we you can do it," kind of thing, and then just feeling really let down with the whole. Let's just drive off. Yeah, but um, as well. So we'll go to the battles. So what was the yes. best fight of the episode? Mm- do you mean with the semi-finals and the final? Yeah, the semi-final and the heat final. Like, all combined. Which, um, out of the three Nemesis fights, versus Roadblock. Nemesis and Roadblock. Yeah, it was, it's probably the closest to a competitive match we see in the entire episode. The thing is, as well, it's where I feel like most of the house robots, in a weird way, got involved yeah. a little bit more, which meant, like, not too much that kind of overpowered, but it was enough to kind of go, we need to watch out for them like in the future yeah because you had like the bit where even when roblox has the bad driving gets stuck with matilda and the spikes at least then you had a moment where roblox was in trouble there was no mm-hmm. there, there was no concern in the heat final that roblox was going to be in trouble there was no. no way of looking into that match and going okay i know who's going to win it was okay it was very it felt very fair Mm. yeah because even like as well as we see in like cut out stuff as well nemesis does get some good shots in on roadblock punches through the side um okay so what was the worst fight the final for me the final yeah so in a way we could give a pass to killatron versus shogun don't worry shogun you didn't get the worst of all three things in this (laughs) one (laughs) No. no i think it's because i think we all for me, I expected a little bit more from the final instead of just a piggyback and then being flipped on the back. Yeah, it was the first instance of a ramp being used as a flipper as such, which probably um, influenced later seasons with the dominance of flippers before the spinners came in. Yeah. Yeah. So, because um, like, I mean, at least with the Killatron Shogun fight, we had, at least we had Killatron get a, get a hit in and you had the thing with Sergeant Bash's saw. So at least you, you got a bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah. The final just seemed like it was there to like make up time. It's like, oh, we've got two minutes left. Let's throw these together and yeah, and um, as as well, it probably it probably took a long ass time to tip Killatron over. So that's why Dead Metal probably got involved just to give him a helping hand. Just a yeah. knock off you go. Yeah. So so in a way, the first like I'd say in a vacuum when you're watching the series for the first time, 
Roadblock versus Killatron is like watching something like The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. Like like for its time it was a it was a it was seen as like a spectacular moment because in many series to come, like with Roadblock, that whenever they recapture Roadblock, they'll always cut back to this moment when it tips Killatron over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've got a question then. Okay. Out of all the robots that were in this episode, which two would you wanted to see into the finals against one another? Uh, in the heat final. In the heat final, out of all the robots, including um, like the ones who were knocked out early, every, everyone, or out of all this, it's six, isn't it? If I remember rightly. Yeah, I've, really? I, I've got I've got two for this one. So okay. we already mentioned Barry versus Roadblock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I've got uh, yeah, and a second one here is Barry versus Grunt. Yes. Yeah. Because you've got the lightest robot in the episode and the heaviest robot to ever take part in the show. What would that look oh. like? And then yeah. also um, Killatron versus um, Nemesis. Yeah, I actually, I don't know about you, but with the axe that Killatron has in this series, I think Nemesis would take this fight. Yeah. I do. Because Nemesis has the pushing power. Um, Killatron, yeah, has pushing Killatron, power. Has, um, Killatron has good pushing and pulling power, but that's only in series two when they souped it up. What is like, for example, if we compare, Nemesis has the like short range kind of. You have to be next to them to kind of cause that damage. Whereas with Killatron, it's long range. So if Nemesis was able to get in at the side, it, it would cause so much damage. Especially with that um, pneumatic spike yeah. and the uh, tires being so close to the edge of the robot. And, and not, ju- it, not and just it, that, you've got the the wheels when it, when it drives backwards and forwards. You've got the two front wheels and the two back wheels that constantly go up and down. It could puncture and, the tire. And the um, actual fact that it is just a plastic bin lid. Pretty much, which is imagine, it's, it's, the, it's the world's most sturdiest bin lid, though. And imagine the um, fun Sergeant Bash would have melting and burning all that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that, that would be that such would be a br- health and safety hazard. What would have been brilliant is just having Nemesis push Killatron into the CPZ. Sergeant Bash sets Nemesis ablaze, and at the same time, Killatron is just melting in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to burn, you will burn. <laughs> but I have steel under my fur. You have electronics. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but, um, grunt grunt versus Barry would be funny. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually thinking away, it's like um, what was I thinking of? Oh yeah, Barry versus Killatron in a way. I don't know about you, but I could see in a way how this could be the first ever out the arena flip. In that yeah. Barry could just drive at Killatron, hit the wall, and it would just bounce over. I could actually understand that one in a way. Yeah, looking at the ground clearance of Killatron, it's actually got a hell of a lot of weaknesses, this robot. Yeah. And in Series 2, those weaknesses are still there, except it's just like the axe is a lot more reliable, it's a bit faster, can turn better. But other than that, most of its weaknesses, like the massive ground clearance, are still there. It wasn't mm-hmm. until Series 4 that they actually put a scoop on the front. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, a lot of the robots, looking at their images and things like that, they are all very much, you don't have the exposed wheels as much as it does with Killatron in this first city. Like, it hovers, which it doesn't, it means that it hasn't really got much of an anchor or weight to it. And really, if you really wanted to just go, I mean, I think if you rammed it hard, hard enough with anyone, it would just flip. Yeah. Yeah, there's a moment in Series 2 as well, which, don't worry, we'll forget about it by the time we get to Series 2, <laughs> where there's a fight be- there's a fight between Panic Attack and Killatron, where Panic Attack drives into Killatron so hard, Killatron stops. Yeah. Panic Attack ran into it that hard, it knocks the safety pin out of Killatron. Bloody hell. And it was this small, tiny pin as well, and it came out, and the whole robot stopped. Yeah. That's the thing with these robots, as much as they're clever and in, like ingenuity and things, there's it, as soon as one, it can be just one bit that fails and you are gone. Yeah. So in a way, you could see Killatron as, in some sort of sense, as the first Robot Wars equivalent of a glass cannon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
it's going to hit you hard, but you hit it, it's going to break. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it could take it, it could dish out all this damage, but at the same time, it's not very good at taking damage. Whereas, where it was against Panic Attack, Panic Attack is a robot that can take a load of damage. Like, it can dish out a bit of damage, but it can take a load of damage and just keep moving. Yeah. I think, as um, you don't mind me saying, you should do an additional series reviewing every robot by the way we're going here. Yeah. Like, I think we'll, like, review every robot, like, in every episode. But I think you can. Because then you can. Like you can easily interact the audience with this kind of thing. Yeah. Like so... anyone viewing, they could be like also this is gonna be fun. Like make sure you comment down below, guys, like what we've been talking about, favorite robots, favorite fights. Make sure you comment. Yeah. Overviews of each robot, please. We yeah. wanna see them. Yeah, we wanna see like everybody's tier I think that's one thing I want to do at the end of the series is bring some of the guests back because we've got a few more guests in few future episodes, and we're gonna do a tier list of every robot that was in the series. So I like, like that plan. <laughs> end of series one. Let's do a tier. Who you think? Yeah. yeah. Just best and worst. Also, I think that they never showed this on TV, so I can reveal this. Nemesis did actually win the Sportsmanship Award for this series. If I remember rightly, yeah, that was mentioned in First Great War. Yeah, because behind because behind the scenes, apparently they were helping everybody else out there, helping people fix their robots, like anything you need, let us know, sort of thing. That's the thing. There's a lot. As much as they're there for competition, there is a lot of camaraderie. Yeah, like with, like with, a lot of like, a lot of friendships started there that are still there to this day. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those kind of shows that everyone's there because I did not know the Twins were in series ten. Uh, yeah. Depth, <laughs> depth. yeah, but that yeah, but we can, I can mention the series ten one because that was actually just for a special event. Yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, that's the thing with this show. When you get shows like this, it's all people of similar... Like, they've all got similar interests, you know. They're all there as a collective because they love building robots and they love that kind of sportsmanship and the quality. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't surprise me that many lifelong friendships have come from this. I mean, it's what, nearly 20-odd years, like 20-plus years since this has come out and friendships are still going strong from it. Yeah. Yeah. I That's... mean, the nostalgia for us as well. Yep. It shows how much of a sh- this show had a major impact as when, well, when us three were kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, Imagine it's, it's, it it's because of this. That, um, one of my guests, who's actually uh, going to be on the next episode, um, th- this show is the reason why I met him because we actually found each other in a YouTube comment section uh, for <laughs> ro- for um, Robot Wars Extreme. Yeah, and we kept talking for years and years, and then we finally met each other in 2014. So five years after we found each other online, we actually like, yeah. met each other in real life, and we're friends and stuff. And we're looking at building a robot together. Exactly, Ooh. that's what shows like this do. That they really show that kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say mean, I'd say on that note, like we'll wrap up this episode. I think out of ten, like if we rate the whole episode, I'll give it a seven. Like, I'd give it six and a half. I, I think I'd, a seven because in, right in a way I would like cut it some slack because it's the first episode. It's not going to be yeah. like Shakespeare. Yeah. But at the same time, there are there are a few bits that like it. It seemed to dip in a few places, and then you also had like um, like the thing with the the cocky and the pits lying out of nowhere. Like you've got missing yeah. context there. That's why I think for me it's a six point five because it's one of those things of. There were bits of that are brilliant, but there was a lot more bits that kind of made no sense. It felt let down. And don't get me wrong, first episode, you know, they're working out everything. Yeah. But I feel like as a, uh, if we're comparing this or in the future with other episodes, it's not a strong. Yeah. And uh, the last thing we'll go on, favourite highlights of the whole episode. Nemesis on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me it's a tie between Nemesis catching fire for the first time or Sergeant Bash's saw just going out of orbit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so that wraps up the first ever episode. Join us next time for Heat B, where we get household names such as Detonator, Recyclops, and my personal favourite robot of all time, Mortis. Until then, we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!